Good evening, everyone. Last week, Nagani took down the number one team in the Big Five football poll at the time, Ishpeming, 20 to 8. Tonight, the Miners look to stay undefeated, playing against a team who needed just one more win in their last regular season game to make the playoffs. That team would be Marquette, who hosted Nagani in a battle for a playoff spot in the Jubilee Cup. The second play from scrimmage, Alex Sherbanaw cuts back inside. He sheds a tackle, and Sherbanaw turns on the afterburners. 70 yards to the house, and just like that, the Redmen led 7-0. Nagani, though, would respond with a touchdown drive of their own, capped off on a 10-yard rumble, bumble, and stumble by Dusty Goupel, and Nagani trailed 7-6. So the Miners will go for two. Tanner Uren would roll to his right and connect here with Tyler LaJoy. And LaJoy holds on, two-point conversion good, and the Miners took an 8-7 lead. And that was the score after one quarter of play. In the second, the Redmond answer from the three-yard line gets to It's Sherbanaw who finds the end zone for the second time. Extra point good, Marquette retook the lead 14-8, and the senior running back is fired up. He wants this game. Nagani, though, come right back at the Redmond D on first and 10 from his own 30-year run. Keeps the ball in the option play, and Tanner Runs to the Marquette 40, a gain of 30, and Nagani is once again in business. And business for the Miners tonight was good. First and 10 for the 14-year end. Airs it out to Brock Weaver, and Weaver makes the catch. Two-point conversion, no good. We were all squared at 14-14. Nagani would take a 26-14 lead in the second, but Marquette scored the final 20 points of the game to come back and beat the Miners 34-26. The Redmen make the playoffs for the third straight season. To the scoreboards, Reed Larson had 210 rushing yards and four scores as Kingsford wins big over Gladstone. Calumet has won five straight games now after losing their first three. Tonight, they win 56-15 over Ironwood. In Alger County, Stevenson beats up on Munising 49-6. And the Wycons defense held Hancock to just seven points as West Aaron County wins by 10. To Delta County, we go. Iron Mountain visiting Escanaba in a good non-conference showdown. Iron Mountain, though, would score first on the road. Jerry Perkle will cash in on a two-point conversion here. And the Miners, or should say the Mountaineers, take an early 8-0 lead. In the second, Escanaba trying to get on the scoreboard, and they would here. Trayvon Wendrick would find the promised lane on a nice individual effort, and the Eskimos took a 7-6 lead. Escanaba wasn't quite done in the second quarter. On another run, this time it's Jacob Walker who runs up the gut 20 yards for the touchdown. Eskimos up 14-7. With two minutes left in the half, it was all even at 14. David Fallish decides to keep it himself on the option play. Good decision. 54 yards to the house. Check out Jim Hansen, head coach. Yes, I love the vertical jump. Coach is excited there, as am I. Escanaba also impressive tonight. They put up 42 points and they win over Iron Mountain. Let's get in a few more scores, shall we? Norway scores a touchdown with minute four left to come back and stun Gwyn by one, 25-24. And Manistique ran away in the second half to beat Westwood 44-28. Back to the highlights, Ishpeming looked to rebound at home tonight against Newberry. The Amatites' third play from scrimmage was a good one. Eric Kostriva gets the handoff, breaks not one, but two tackles, and Kostriva has reservations for six more points. Touchdown, Ishpeming, extra point good, 7-0 Hematites. On Newberry's next possession, the Indians punting. Check that, the Indians not punting. Dustin Brown would fake the punt, and he would run for a little while. A Newberry first down right at the 50-yard line. But the Indians couldn't score, 7-0 Ishpeming after one. In the second, Newberry looking to jumpstart the offense on the play-action fake. Ian Stokes throws downfield, but Eric Estriva is there to make the INT. A short return puts the Hematites deep in Newberry territory. Ishpeming, though, would turn the ball over on downs. Newberry would have to punt. This time they would, and the Hematites would cash in here. Tyrus Milimaki catches the ball at the Indians' 32, and Milimaki would patiently find the end zone in a nice effort by the Hematite special teams. A 32-yard touchdown return would make it 15-0 Ishpeming after the two-point conversion. And the Hematites win their seventh game of the season tonight, 29-6 over Newberry. And welcome back. After suffering their first loss of the season last Friday night in Calumet, Lions return home tonight, hoping to get back to their winning ways. But the Purple Hornets' toughest test of the season awaited them in their own backyard. And boy, did Northland Pines bring their A game tonight. On first and 10 from their own 30, no score here. Eagles running back Austin Ramish carries the ball for a gain of 20 in the first down. Ramish has committed to play football at Wisconsin next season. Yes, Wisconsin. Ramish's teammate, Lance Bontrager, he could play football at the next level himself as this run. He sheds a few tackles for the long touchdown run. Two-point conversion good. 8-0 Northland Pines. Later in the first, the Eagles take to the air. Cooper Kerner 
throws it up here to Sam Lacko and he hauls it in. 29 yards on the pitch and catch and Northland Pines is rolling on all cylinders. 23-0 Northland Pines after one. The Eagles kept the foot on the gas in the second as Dan Peters finds the end zone from six yards out to extend the NP lead. The Purple Hornets had no answer on offense tonight as James Beaker had nowhere to go at all. Northland Pines wins running away from Lance 68-24. Back to the scoreboards, North Central defeats Bark River Harris by two scores, and Hurley takes care of an underman on Tanagan team, 47-20. Back to Barriga County, where Barriga played Houghton. Yes, that makes sense. Both teams still looking for win number one. The Gremlins would strike first. Ben Collar connects here with Sam Bethencourt on the slant route for six points. Two-point conversion good. 8 nothing Houghton. Still in the first, the Gremlins driving, and that drive would be stopped thanks to a fumble. The Vikings' John Caster falls on the ball, and Barriga had the ball once again. The band, they're happy, but the Vikings couldn't move the ball, so Houghton got the ball back. And on second and goal from their own eight-yard line, Ryan LeBurge takes the toss sweep to the right, and he finds the end zone. Touchdown, Houghton, two-point conversion, no good, though, but 14-0 Gremlins. LeBurge would score another TD here in the second, and congratulations to the Houghton Gremlins. They win their first game of the season tonight, 50-0 over Barriga. In eight-man football, Cedarville stays undefeated as they double up Bel Air 28-14. They will be the number one team in the eight-man poll once again next week. Superior Central scores 42 to beat Ingadine by 10 points. And Rapid River puts up 60 in their win over Mid Peninsula. Well, switching gears to hockey, NMU opened up their season against Wisconsin in the Rush Center at Green Bay. The Badgers led 2-1-0 in the third, I should say, when NMU ties up the game. Reed Seckel banks home the puck, and that tied the game up at 1.49 seconds into the period. Later in the third, NMU in the power play. Justin Rose throws the puck in front of Cohen Adair, and the freshman puts the puck past Joel Rumpel. And the Wildcats, congratulations to Walt Kyle and the boys. They win their first game tonight 2-1 on the season. NMU goalie Jared Corot stopped 19 of the 20 shots he faced this evening. And the Wildcats will play once again against the Badgers tomorrow night. Puck drop just after 8 p.m. in Green Bay. Well, the volleyball now, the GLIAC Conference is in Aurora, Illinois, playing in the crossover tournament with the Great Lakes Valley Conference. Southern Indiana swept NMU to open up play for the Cats. Kelly Heron had 15 kills. Kaylin Zimmerman had 18 digs for NMU. The Wildcats didn't fare well in their second match today either as Missouri-St. Louis sweeps away NMU. And Michigan Tech lost the fifth set today, 15-11 to Quincy. They lose the match also 3-2. Well, to soccer now, Northern Michigan hosted Ohio Dominican earlier today. In the first half, the Panthers almost got on the scoreboard here as Lauren Pratt's. The header is just a tad high, and the game remains scoreless. Midway through the first half, Northern had a golden opportunity to take the lead as goalie Laura Clark gets caught out of position. Taylor Smith puts the ball on goal, but Jessica Dierozito is there to knock the ball out of the goal at the very last second. Nice defensive play. Ohio Dominican would take the lead at the 11th minute mark of the first half. Jennifer Holton beats Nicole Musi for the goal. That was the only goal scored in the first half. Ohio Dominican would score in the second half as well. They shut out NMU 2-0. In Houghton, the Lady Huskies get goals from Katie Boardman and Dana Kassam. They shut out Ashland 2-0. Jenna Phelps gets a shutout in net for Tech.